From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Today, friends, we will be discussing the world in need of a new world order. Jack will tell us how and why. And then a startling news release from Israel and the Pope speaks on the second coming of Christ. Before we get to all of those and much, much more from global headlines from around the world, we're going to be talking about a couple of different views, uh, post-trib and pre-trib. Uh, Jack, uh, we had a neighbor who believed the opposite of what you believe. Give us the definition of those two things. Reverend Herbert Streeter, who is now with the Lord, lived almost across the street from us for a number of years, and oftentimes he'd have me preach at his church, even though we didn't agree as to the time of the rapture. A pre-tribulationist believes that we're going to go before the seven years of judgment begin on earth. The post-tribulationist believes that they'll go through the horrendous seven years and meet Christ in chapter 19 of the book of Revelation. We go up in chapter 4, verse 1, when he says, come up hither. I'm such a pre-tribulationist, I no longer eat post-toasties. <laughs> How do you like that? But listen to me very carefully now. One day, Herb came over with a batch of headlights. He said, oh, brother, look, Jesus is coming soon. We're going to meet him in the near future. I said, yes, we are. And I'm going to meet him seven years sooner than you do. <laughs> and I said, Herb, take care of my car and my house while I'm gone. <laughs> uh, we had some good times together. We can disagree on some things and still love one another in the Lord. But Rexella, the Bible teaches that the Lord Jesus is coming soon. And I believe we'll not be here for the seven horrendous years of judgment because in chapter 3, verse 10, our Lord says, I'll keep you from, the Greek word ek, out of the hour of temptation and testing which comes upon the whole world. We'll be gone. Because in the next chapter, 4, verse 1, he says, come up hither and we go up in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. And we're going to show you today how near this all is. Oh, Jack. Well, I'm very, very grateful. Aren't you friends that Jack believes and believes the Bible teaches that the Lord is coming for his children prior to Armageddon, prior to all the bad things that are uh, right ahead of us, I believe. How good to know that he said, I'm coming again. I'll take you home prior to that. Well, friends, we have a, a new president-elect, of course, Obama, and he's facing a critical time in the history of our nation. And take a look at this headline. I think it describes what I just said. Our climb will be steep. Obama faces challenges unrivaled since the Great Depression. And again, a world in need of a new order. Jack has talked about this for years. And now here it is. And we all watched in awe as we saw the terrorist paralyze India's business capital. Of course, that is Mumbai as they attack them. And again, take a look at this, dear lady. India, Pakistan, tensions rise in the aftermath of Mumbai attacks. Now, the authorities say there were about 174 people who were killed and so many, many more injured. Few gains in Thai protesters final war. Now I'm going to show you friends that this type of thing is around the world. It's not just in India, Pakistan and so forth. It's around the world. Here's Somalia. Pirates attack on cruise ship stirs fears. People are almost afraid to go out in the waters there. And the United Nation watchdog finds nuclear threats in Syria and Iran. Remember I said around the world. And again, fearing attack, Iran militia holds massive defense drill. Well, let's take a look at Israel. Israeli Air Force chief says we are ready to deal with Iran. They're ready. And Abbas, no chance for peace in 2008. Now that is the Palestinian president speaking there. And factory closures, layoffs stir unrest again in China. Oh my, and here we are in North Korea. How they see us, can Obama tame North Korea? Well, the cartoonist is giving us something here. Rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, two men in a tub. You see Medvedev, 
and Chavez. They are two men having a pretty good time. They're Russia and Venezuela. Once again, the United States to watch Russian Venezuelan maneuvers very closely. They're referring to that cartoon you just saw. The FBI warns of possible terror plot against New York City subway during the holidays. Oh Atomic. my, let's pray, friends, for that to be prevented. Frequent travelers wonder if any place is safe. Can we go anywhere without an attack? And <clears throat> new report calls nuclear uh, terrorism serious risk. And of course, uh, one of the first on their list would be Washington, D.C. and New York City. General Chilton says, sounding the nuclear alarm. The U.S. will not have a credible arsenal unless Washington acts soon. We've got to act soon. Netanyahu, let's go to him. In Israel gives us five years at the most. He says America will find itself embroiled in a nuclear holocaust. With nuclear weapons, Iran will be able to, listen to this, hit large American cities. Can you believe it, friends? that they can hit any city here in the United States, the large cities. Jack, we are living in perilous times, aren't we? Rick Sully, you just mentioned 15 different nations and it's going on everywhere. There's no end to it. Yes, dangerous times because Jesus is about to return. And you folks who say, oh, it'll never happen in my lifetime. It won't be long until you're begging Jesus to come and get you because of what they're planning. Netanyahu says there'll be a world war within two to five years if Iran gets that bomb. And America, he says, will become an incinerated nuclear mess. We are not the doomsday prophets. We're just quoting the newspapers. We're quoting the journalists. We're telling you what they're saying. We're telling you good news. Jesus is going to come and get us very soon. Now, how do I know that? These are signs the Bible gives. And 2 Timothy 3, 1 says, This know also in the last day, perilous, dangerous times shall come. Jesus said in Luke 21, verse 25, Nations will be in distress with perplexity. The Seven years of judgment in Revelation chapter 6 to 18 pictures many of these identical headlines that are in your papers at this very moment. And it's described in Jeremiah 30 verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. Daniel 12, 1, There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 21, For then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world. To this time, no, nor ever shall be in the future. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Friends, I've picked out three questions. Uh, one already I've asked Jack, we're living in dangerous times. We all know that. But he's been speaking for so many, many years, I've heard him, uh, that someday we're going to need a new world order. And, and Jack, is that in the Bible also? Oh, yes. The Bible teaches in Revelation 17.10 there will only be seven empires in history and the final one will be the revived Roman Empire which is the present day European Union. Soon a world leader is going to come out of that group of nations, Revelation 13.1, and he'll have control over all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations. It's a global world government. Now, I've told you in the past that the Illuminati, the Bilderbergers, the Consul of Rome and many are all planning for this one world event and at that time they will give a number to every human being through microchipping them. Guess what? The Bilderbergs, the most secretive organization in the world, has just met in Virginia. Someone who was in the crowd that they did not recognize, who listened to what was going on, has given us this evidence. I've got it all documented in headlines. And in about two weeks from now, I'll bring it in here. But listen to this. Their plan is to microchip every human being in the next few years on the basis of, we will save you from the terrorists. Why, that is Revelation 13, verses 16 to 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or forehead that no man might buy or sell except those who have that mark. They're planning for it. Ungodly organizations. Mm, Jack. One more question. I'm going to combine all of these uh, that I have not referred to already, those headlines. Wars, nuclear holocaust, 
terrorism. I read about them in the headlines to you just a moment ago. Oh, Jack, are all these things in the Bible? They really are, Rick Sella. The Bible teaches there's going to be the war of the latter years and the latter days in Ezekiel chapters uh, 38 and 39. And lo and behold, Russia is going to begin the movement along with China's the second wave, and that is Revelation 16, 12, and chapter 9, verses 14 to 18, the greatest war in history. Now, the Bible teaches that there'll be an Arab alliance joining with Russia and China at that time, and there is Egypt in Daniel 11:40, Syria in Isaiah 17, 1, Iran, Iraq, Ethiopia, Libya, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, and all these other nations joining together for the great push, and that's Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 5 to 7, and then when one gets to Psalm 84, he finds Lebanon, and that includes Hamas and Hezbollah and Jordan and all the rest for one of the greatest wars in history. These headlines are Bible headlines, and you can find that also, the nations just mentioned, including Jordan and Lebanon and the rest in Psalm 84, verses 5 to 7. What a day to be alive. Jesus is coming. Jack, I'm so glad you're quoting the Bible, aren't you? The Bible explains the headlines. The Bible tells us exactly where we're going and what it all means. Something I would like to ask, Jack, though, Mumbai, oh, my heart hurt for those people. Why did those terrorists from Pakistan attack the people in India? Oh, Rexella, this is unbelievable. This has to do with nuclear warfare. India has the weapon as well as Pakistan, and these terrorists thought they could cause enough trouble to get both nations beginning to use their nuclear weapons, and that would be the beginning of one of the worst wars in history. And there's more, Rexella. You know the two men in that tub, Rub-a-dub-dub, Chavez and Medvedev, but soon he'll be replaced by Putin. They are now trying to erect a nuclear base in Venezuela, and our world leaders are saying, especially here in America, now we will have right in our backyard a missile base that could destroy much of the United States of America. Chavez and Russia are planning this in the future. Mm, you know, friends, they are not going to destroy the world. They're not. Jack's going to talk about that just a little bit later. But it's so good to know the Lord is coming back, and He's going to stop all of this that we're talking about, all the bad news. But I have some very good news for you, and that is the wonderful offer of the week, the Jack Van Impe Prophecy Bible. Oh, my love it. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanopee Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanopee Ministries. Dr. Vanopee has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanopee Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanopee used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of Scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. Woo! And please do not put off making the 800 number call or the address. It's a wonderful, wonderful gift to give at any time of the year. So please get your order in right away. Jack, I love this new edition. It is so good. Oh, folks, I never saw such an influx of orders as the last week. Uh, it's just exciting to see how people want this Prophecy Bible because of the hour in which we're living. And you know, in it is the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, all verse by verse, and the A to Z to prophecy, three books of mine in the past, selling for $60, and you can get them all in this Bible now for just the $59.95 price. What a deal. And friends, don't put it off. The 800 number, the address, write or call immediately. Good for any occasion, a birthday. Oh, how good to give as a gift. Friends, you know, as a child, I heard all of my life messages on the rapture. 
How wonderful to hear messages. It's a great message of hope in the Bible. And I'd like for you to see this cover the rapture loved or feared. Now you see everybody looking up. They're talking about the rapture, the coming of the Lord, but loved or feared two classes of people out there. Somebody loves it, somebody fears it. How come, Jack? Oh, because those who are ready love it, and those who aren't fear it. Rexella, this excites me because I have these Protestants and Catholics and everybody saying, oh, you can't find that word in the Bible, so we don't believe in it. Wait a minute. It is in the Bible, the Catholic Bible, the Latin Vulgate penned by Jerome many hundreds of years ago. When he gets the first Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, and we find the words caught up, he calls it rapiamor, raptured. It's there in the Catholic Bible. And you know, Rexella, Fathers Tumblr and Funk wrote a book entitled Raptured. It's terrific. I read every word of it. These were priests of the church who said, we thank Bishop Dougherty at our Catholic seminary for teaching this subject. But you know, I'd been announcing that I was going to deal with the Catholic catechism. And God gave me something miraculous just this week for this program. And it said, Pope Benedict XVI preaches on the second coming at St. Peter's Square on November the 19th. And I'll tell you, it's exactly what I've been saying. It's going to describe the rapture for you by the Pope of the present Catholic Church. But yeah, actually, actually, the Pope has gone back to the original teaching of the Catholic Church. Well, it was changed in 431 A.D. Now he's gone back to the original teaching, which, of course, we do believe. Take a look at what he had to say there in Rome. It was in the year 52 that St. Paul wrote the first of his letters, the first letter to the Thessalonians, in which he speaks of the return of Jesus. So let's go on in chapter 4, verses 14 to 17, stating... If we believe that Jesus died and rose, God will bring forth with him from the dead those who have fallen asleep. And Paul continues, those who have died in Christ will rise first, then we the living, the survivors, will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thenceforth we shall be with the Lord unceasingly. Praise have you not Lord. heard Jack speak about that? I'll tell you. And there's even more. First Corinthians fifteen, fifty one to fifty four. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep be dead, but we shall all dead and living be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we the living shall be changed. For this corruptible, the dead must put on incorruption, this mortal the living must put on immortality. So when this corruptible, the dead, shall have put on incorruption, this mortal living shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought the past the saying that is written, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? And you know, when we hear the sound, come up hither, we're changed to be like Jesus. First John 3, 2, when we see Jesus, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him, his return, purifies himself even as he is pure. That's the crowd that's not fearing because they have lived the life. But Rexella, the catechism brings forth the idea of his coming back to the earth. Now, do you know that the Catholic fathers of the church until 430 taught that Christ would come and set up his kingdom for a thousand years? What? That's right. In the first hundred years, we had St. Barnabas and St. Bartholomew. In the second 100 years, we had St. Arrhenius and St. Justin Martyr. In the third 100 years, we had St. Methodius and St. Lactanius. This teaching continued until the year 430. In fact, Gibbons, in his writing of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, says 21 of the great church fathers all taught the 1,000-year reign of Christ. But then in 431, at the Council of Ephesus, we had a man by the name of St. Augustine who was influenced by Ambrose and Origen, one of the first heretics, to turn against the Jews. And because they taught that their Messiah would come for a thousand years, they said, let's get this thing out of the Christian religion. And Augustine believed that when Christ would come, it would be the end of the world because he 
could not in his mind, having studied Gnosticism, believe that this world could last forever. Well, as you know, even today, the Catholic Church ends every Mass with world without end, amen, amen, and that's not what St. Augustine taught. Getting out because of Israel, yes. And you know that even Protestant groups today are still following Augustine's teaching, that the God is through with the Jew forever. And every time you take the word Israel, you translate it as church, and every time Jerusalem is translated as heaven, a 3,400 manipulations and misinterpretations of the true Word of God, but I'm glad the catechism is right on and they've come back now. This Pope was the one who did the new Catholic catechism and all you priests ought to study the points I'm about to give because he's right on. Well, Jack, many Protestant denominations have always and continued to speak about the coming of the Lord. The Baptist, Pentecostals, and Nazarenes conserve de denominations, and it's wonderful that they have always done this, and now the Pope's speaking about it. We're going to go back and forth here, and I'm going to give some points from the Catechism, and Jack is going to tell us where it's found in our Bible, all right? First of all, point 2818, the Lord's Prayer, Thy Kingdom Come, refers primarily to the final coming of the reign of God through Christ's return. That's Matthew 6, 10 and Revelation 20, verse 4. Point 2853, the Spirit and the church pray, come Lord Jesus, since he is coming, he'll deliver us from the evil one. That's uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, 8, when Christ comes, he destroys Antichrist with the brightness of his coming. Point 769, the church longs for the full coming of the kingdom when she will be united in glory with the, her king. Well, that's when the marriage of the church is taking place with Christ in Revelation 19, verse 7, and then the honeymoon as she comes back with Christ to rule and reign for the thousand years of Revelation 20, verse 4. And Jude 14 adds, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. That's all those who were raptured returning with him for the great honeymoon on earth. Two points together, 1042, 1047. The universe itself will be renewed, not recreated. And again, the visible universe then is itself destined to be transformed, restored to its original state. You've been saying that forever, oh, Jack. Oh, this is exciting, Rexella. Let me add it. There are two words in the Greek, neos and kainos. Neos means a brand new creation. Kainos means a remodeling job. Whenever the Bible speaks about the new heaven and the new earth, it doesn't mean that the old one ended and that this is something brand new. No, the Bible teaches that the world is never going to end. Ecclesiastes 1, 4, the earth abides forever. Psalm 104, verse 5, Yahweh God created the earth. It shall never, never be removed or destroyed. Isaiah 4, 45, 17, and Ephesians 3, 21. It's a world without end. Now, there are 120 texts just like that stating that it's an eternal world. However, there will be some problems because there'll be 21 judgments in Revelation chapter 6 to 18, and Armageddon is one of them in Revelation 16, 16. So there'll be destruction, but not the end. And that's why the two Catholic texts that Rexella just quoted say, that it's going to be transformed, a renewal, a renovation. And that's Matthew 19, 28, that speaks about the regeneration in Acts 3, 21, the restitution of all things. Look it up in Webster's Dictionary. It means a remodeling job, a renovation, just like we read from the Catechism. There's one more point, yeah, Rexella. One more, one more quickly. Now, point 765, the 12 tribes of Israel are the foundation stones of the new Jerusalem. All right, well, how about I it? I love that. That proves that the church is teaching that God is not through with the Jew and that the 12 uh, foundations of the holy city in Revelation 21 verses 12 to 15 are composed by the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. You Protestants who are so messed up on that and preach that God is through with Israel, you better get a, a Bible and study it or study the catechism. Yes, Jack, we'll study the Bible because in here it tells us how to be prepared for the coming of the Lord. How wonderful to be prepared. Jack, will you quickly tell him how to be prepared? You know the story. Jesus came, took a body with blood, shed it for you, for me. And that precious blood will cleanse any sin you have ever committed. What a God. What a Savior. All you have to do is ask him to save you. Will you do it? Lord Jesus, Savior of the world. 
thank you for dying for me, shedding that precious blood for me to save me forever. I want to be with you, Lord, when you come back to be in this glorious, new, remodeled earth. So, Jesus, I'm asking you today to come into my heart. Save me now. I pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. I trust that you prayed that prayer with Jack. If you did, you're ready. You're ready. The Lord came into your heart, and that's why he came to be your Savior. So if you prayed that prayer, there's my address. Write to me. I'll send you absolutely free this little book. On first steps in a new direction. The Lord will walk you with you every single day of your life. Write to me, please. And now I'll draw your attention to this wonderful revised edition of the acclaimed Jack Vanippy Prophecy Bible. Jack, there are three other books in here. The book of Revelation, verse by verse, Daniel, verse by verse, and an A to Z of prophetical terms, everything you can think of, and then 10,385 coded verses, and everything you heard today you can find among those coded verses to really help you. This is a gold mine to give you Bible knowledge as to what's coming in the future. Yes, a gold mine. It's good for personal use. It's good for a birthday gift for any any time of the year. It's so good also for just sitting down and reading the Bible and having it do something for your own soul. It'll build you up spiritually. So don't put it off. It's beautiful in leather binding. All oh, good. I will also put it in a gift box for you. So please don't put off. Call or write. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order your Prophecy Bible. Call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send 5995 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send 5995 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. My dear friend, Dr. Van Empey is a perfectionist. That's why he wanted his prophecy Bible to be bound in beautiful, burgundy, handcrafted, genuine leather. It's a real thing, Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. It is beautiful. And good news, it's $120 value for $59.95. So make the call immediately. We'll put it in a beautiful gift box for you or write to us. It is flying out of here, so we want to hear from you. It is wonderful, believe me, one of our best, best offers. Now, let me just draw your attention to the fact we have a great web, jvim.com. You can see this program. Once again, Jack goes so quickly, doesn't he? But somebody said the other day, boy, you got a great website. We do, jvim.com, so do this. Let me just leave you with this wonderful thought. The best way to break a bad habit is to drop it. <laughs> How true. We look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.